I just, I will start this off and uh, we just want to have a great time this afternoon in introducing a, a, a really great new leader for our program. Uh, but thank you for being here and welcome. I want to say a special thank you to our students. Here we go, runners up, show everybody. All right, this is very cool. Thank you, thank you for being here. And I hope that one of the things that you remember is as we talk about building a program, that this is your program, that we're not doing this for Coach Henson or Lynn Hickey, we're doing this for our students. So thank you for being here. Um, just very proud, even though this is not a secret, very proud to be able to officially introduce our new head men's basketball coach today. Uh, had a had a very quick search process, but wasn't as crazy as what we went through <laughs> with football. Uh, so we had some time to really uh, do our research, and we spoke to uh, a lot of really good coaches. Uh, Brad Parrott, who's a senior member of our staff, did a great job of leading the search. And as we started to narrow things down, uh, we're able to make a recommendation to Dr. Romo and uh, Sam Gonzalez, and we really appreciate them then confirming what what our research had found um, and and helping us make a commitment uh, to bring this gentleman on board um, so you know when people ask well what did you look for and first thing is he's got to be able to coach basketball uh, <laughs> so that was the first thing um, but wanted we have a great opportunity here I this place is a gold mine and we need someone that can really stabilize our program, that can build relationships. Um, so we needed a very strong person that has a great background as a coach, as a former student athlete, as a professional player. He, all those pieces fit in well with Steve. Um, just also just need a really good, and I don't wanna make this sound, just a really mature, solid person. And I, everybody I called in the around the country, everybody I called, um, said he is an outstanding person and an outstanding coach. That that if you can get him to come to UTSA, then then you will have made a tremendous selection. Um, he, uh, you know, we've we've he's got a great resume and he's had a tremendous mentor um, in 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 Long Kruger. And it was really fun. Uh, and Dr. Romo was at the Final Four to see our future coach standing on the sidelines in Houston. Um, it, you know, we had a lot of Roadrunner pride that night uh, to, to think about our future coach already having that experience. And so I, I don't want to put any pressure on Steve, but we are hosting the 2018 <laughs> Final Four here. <laughs> So is that, is that appropriate? Yeah, right, okay. Right, yeah, that's uh, a good no. time to be talking about that. <laughs> I think one of the things that that um, this is not an overnight deal. This 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 is going to be building a program, and we want Steve and his staff to do it the right way, and to really give our student athletes a wonderful experience and to build relationships in the city and in the state. We know as an athletic department, we have the responsibility to engage our students, our alumni, and our community fans. And quite honestly, I don't think we could have found a better person to do that than Coach Steve Henson. And so it is my honor and privilege to introduce you to your new head coach. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for being here. I am thrilled, excited, pumped up, humbled, honored to be here. Uh, this is a wonderful place. Uh, if we could take this right outside into the, what is it, Paseo? Paseo. The Paseo. I've been up and down that about 30 times the last three days. It's amazing out there. It's beautiful. Uh, it's a special place and, and I'm excited to be here. Um, thank you for all the students that are here. I need to see all of you as soon as possible. We're going to do a lot of connecting, a lot of wonderful things here, and I appreciate you all being here. Uh, thanks for everyone else for being here as well. Um, I can start out by saying thank you to Dr. Romo. I got the chance to spend some time with him when I was when I was here uh, on campus a little over a week ago, and I was just just loved his passion, his his vision, his commitment. Uh, he loves this university. Uh, he knows so much about this university. He's got a great vision, great leadership, and that just added to, to my excitement. Uh, 
Sam Gonzalez as well. Uh, I know we're going to do some special things. I enjoyed visiting with him. So when you, when you get to meet those types of people that have, have that type of leadership, it uh, just further, further uh, drives my excitement. Uh, I'm going to gonna say quite a few thank yous here, but, but certainly Lynn, Lynn Hickey has been terrific through this whole process. These things can, can get a little hectic. Um, in, in this case, we were trying to win a bunch of basketball games late in the year, and that was great, and she respected our time and, and what we were trying to do at the University, University of Oklahoma. We were trying to go to the Final Four, and uh, she allowed me to, to continue to focus on OU, which I needed to do, and we did go to the Final Four, and we were able to get this job lined up. And, and I pre just, just appreciate, appreciate the way she handled all of that. She's been terrific with all of it. Um, I know she's committed. I know she is going to work with us to do some special things. Um, you know, I've worked very hard for this. I've been around the game my entire life. My father was a coach. My parents were young when I was born. Uh, I have memories of walking across the street from the, from the elementary school to the junior high when my father was a coach. I was in the middle of seventh grade football practices when I was 10 years old. I was bouncing the balls in the middle of his junior high practices. I've been around sports my whole life. My father was a coach. I knew I wanted to coach. And so I worked very, very hard at this. And uh, I just continued to pray and work and trust that someday the right opportunity would come, come around, and, and it did here at UTSA. Uh, before I go any further, I want to introduce my family. Um, so grateful for them and uh, all that they, they have shared, the, the good times that we've shared together. But uh, the fa families have a tough deal sometimes. We're, we're away a lot. Um, we're dealing with other things a lot, and they've been terrific and supportive over all the years and the moves and the things that we've done. Uh, my wife, we've been married. We've met at K-State. We've been married for uh, over 25 years now. Uh, my wife, Cindy. Um, my younger son, Pearson. He's a junior in high school right now at Norman High. Uh, it's the only place in, in Oklahoma, in, in Norman, the Norman area, where you can wear orange. Uh, is <laughs> Norman High. They happen to be orange and black. The rest of it, uh, with the Texas and Oklahoma State people, we don't, we don't wear much orange around there. But uh, he's a junior right now. My other son is a freshman in college. He got the chance to walk around here today and loved it. And uh, we're gonna, we need to get him signed up as soon as possible because he loves it here. He's excited about the move because we moved to Oklahoma five years ago. And in those five years, he was unable to find a barber. So <laughs> we, we are going to, uh, we've, we've got to look for a house. For, for my wife, and, and uh, we've got to find a barber somewhere. And that's somewhere. really not fair because he has all the hair that Steve's ever worn in, so. Well, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. I, I really haven't fought him on that much because, because I know what's coming, and he knows what's coming. <laughs> uh, I can't go. I uh, also want to introduce uh, one new member of our staff, Scott Thompson, right back here. Uh, he, yep, he's got it. He's got it. He just just got here. He was ripping and running this morning trying to get a few things done. Uh, Scott and I met years ago uh, and, and finally had the chance to get him on our staff at Oklahoma five years ago and uh, he's going to do terrific things. One of the best people I've ever been around in my life. We talk about high character. Uh, his picture might be uh, right next to that. He's terrific. Uh, he talks kind of funny. He's from uh, Mississippi but uh, <laughs> he's going to be really really good and I'm excited to have him on board. Um, Coach Kruger and, and Barb have been terrific to me. I don't want to go any, any further without saying thank you to them. I signed to play at K-State over 30 years ago or right at 30 years ago, and they've been right there with me every step of the way. They were terrific uh, to me on and off the court, and I'm, I'm grateful for everything they did for me. The people at Oklahoma, uh, OU, Norman, were terrific. We loved our five years there. We had a great time. We got to work with some terrific kids. Uh, many of those you saw on TV this year were just fantastic young men, and we have to watch them grow up. That's one of the beauties of staying in one place for several years is just when you bring those young kids in, you get to see them grow and uh, become better basketball players, but certainly become uh, good young men and good citizens, and we had that this, the last several years at Oklahoma. Joe Castiglione and his le leadership at OU is terrific, and I'm grateful for all they've done. Uh, just talk a little bit about what, what we're going to do, the way we're going to play. We're going to play fast. We're going to play up-tempo. We're going to push the ball. Throw it ahead at every opportunity. Throw it ahead and attack. Make plays for each other. Be very unselfish. Uh, we're going to shoot threes. At least the guys that can make threes are going to shoot threes. Um, and they'll figure that out this summer. Um, those that can't are going to pass it to the guys that can. Um, but, but we really do. We want to get up and down the floor. Our guys are going to have to be in great shape, great condition in order to play that way. But it's a fun style. It's the way kids want to play. It's uh, the style that, that fans want to watch. Defensively, we'll be mostly man-to-man. 
be very aggressive, switching man to man, pick up the ball early, try to take take some things away, just be disruptive, uh, mix in a lot of running jumps, a lot of traps around midcourt, stir things up defensively. We, we don't want people to come down and be comfortable. We don't want them doing what they do every day in practice. Uh, and we'll be very, very flexible. You know, we're going to adapt and change to our personnel. Um, we're going to recruit certain types of kids, and it's going to start with character. That's the way we've always done it. We're going to recruit high-character kids. We're going to recruit great teammates, guys that, guys that we want to be in the foxhole with. You know, in, in college athletics, you spend a lot of time together, travel together, practice, meals. Uh, it's, it's imperative that we have good, good kids, guys that care about the guy they're sitting next to. We want winners. We want gym rats. We want shooters. Um, we're going to recruit the right guys, the right fit. Uh, we'll, we'll turn down some guys that may be a higher level that we just don't think are the right fit for us that aren't going to do things the way we want to do them. We may miss out on some guys, but we, we, we're confident we're going to find the right guys. We're going we're to surround them with attention and love and, and time and, and help them get better, help them grow as young men and help them develop their skills and become better players. Um, we're going get to get out in the community. You know, again, we're going to seek out, seek out student leaders. We're going to seek out people in the community. Our staff will be, be very engaged in the community on campus. We get our players out every chance we get, get them to the elementary schools, have them read and connect. Uh, we'll have open practices when the rules allow. Once we get started, we'll have open practices, and we'll invite groups to come to practice. Uh, it allows us to connect better with, with the groups that attend. Uh, it's good for our guys, forces them to stay locked in during practice if there's people coming in and out of practice. And uh, it's, it's been something that, that we feel really, really strongly about. Um, I had a chance to meet our team. I, I felt like I'd been here for five or six days and hadn't met my team yet, when in reality I'd only been here about ten hours, but I was anxious to meet them. I met the volleyball team before I met, met my own team. <laughs> and they were really good, so that was, that was good. I was excited about that. But uh, we... we Put, put together a little meeting the other night down the locker room, and I just, just shared uh, my expectations with them. And, and I told them, I, I was hired here to turn this program around. And we're going to turn it around. And we're not going to have any doubt about that. As I looked at each one of them, I said, but you guys are going to determine how quickly we turn it around. You guys determine how drastically the turnaround is. It's their program. We're going to work like crazy and, and, and do things together. Um, but my mission, my charge, is to create, a, to create an environment where they look forward to coming to practice every single day, where they look forward to being around our staff, where they look forward to coming through the office and just sit down and talk, not, not watch film, not talk about X's and O's, but just come through and be comfortable. We need that. That's vital to our program. Um, when we had that meeting, I guess that was Wednesday night, and uh, we decided to have a little workout. On, on Thursday morning, and I said, if any of you want to hit the snooze button tomorrow, ju just do it. Just hit it, and then hit it again, and then come see me in the afternoon. Because if you're not looking forward to getting up and playing basketball, then something's not right. And we'll create that environment. They'll look forward to coming to work every day. We want them to be great students, obviously. Academics are going to come first, but these, these young guys love playing basketball. And if, if we're not having some fun on the court, I'm not doing my job right. Um, you know, I, I look forward to connecting with people, look forward to meeting people. This is maybe in addition to the, the hiring process and, and the Final Four and the NCAA tournament, all the things that were going on, we're also in the midst of our most busy, uh, chaotic uh, recruiting calendar. We're in a recruiting period right now, and then we're in a dead period for four days, and then we're in a, we can go and watch non-scholastic activities the following weekend. So there's a lot going on with that, um, but, but I do look forward to getting out and meeting people, connecting with the local coaches, um, the fans, the students, uh, the alumni. Um, I look forward to the, the new challenges and the new UTSA family. And uh, birds up. Thank you. JJ Perez, Inside Runner Sports, Scout.com. Coach, welcome to San Antonio. Congratulations on the job. Um, you're widely considered one of the, the, the better assistant coaches uh, in the nation. Uh, I wonder why San Antonio, why UTSA, why now? What were some of the things that stood out about this university to you? I, I, was, 
I was pumped. I mean, I, when I found out there was an opportunity, I didn't hesitate for a second. I jumped all over it. I was thrilled. Uh, I think there's just a ton of potential here. Uh, it's a great city. I think there's a great buzz going on around campus right now. The Conference USA uh, c connection is, I think, is terrific. Uh, the excitement around the football program. Uh, I think Frank will do a terrific job. I got a chance to meet him and interacted with his staff. I, I like the way those guys are going about things. I think there's, I think there's just a, a lot of exciting things going on here. The, the talent in the state is terrific. Uh, you know, people come from all over the country to recruit the state of Texas. Well, we're going to be in the state of Texas recruiting the state of Texas. So uh, there, there's so many things. I can just go right down the, down the list. And I'm, I'm telling you, just walking around this campus, it's, it's got a great feel for, for, for the students. I think it's a wonderful place. I'm, uh, brought my, fam my family got in here late last night, and I wanted to give them the full tour late at night last night. It's a pretty special place. Steve, uh, I'm Jerry Briggs uh, from the San Antonio Express. Welcome to San Antonio. Thank you. And welcome to your uh, same same for your family. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, Steve about your. Uh, I was reading a little bit about your dad, uh, longtime uh, coach uh, in Kansas, and just kind of how um, how it shaped you uh, uh, to grow up in the home of a high school basketball coach. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Girl, like I said. Uh, been around sports and basketball my entire life. Uh, my father coached freshman basketball for about 12 years. He got the head job at uh, McPherson High School when I was a sophomore. I got to play for him for three years uh, there. He, he taught me a lot about the game. I, I love the way he approached it. Uh, a lot of the things I learned from him and the things I learned from Coach Kruger, are, there's some similarities there. Uh, neither one of them are the kind that are going to yell and scream and rant and rave and curse. Um, I will not rant and rave or yell unless we don't box out. Um, <laughs> uh, but but just just the way they, they treated people, you know. And those two guys are, are the guys. And there's been a lot of others. I, I was so fortunate in my playing career. Uh, my, my playing career, we bounced around a little bit. Cindy, did we bounce around a little bit? Yeah, we did. Uh, and that wasn't the, wasn't the ideal. Uh, way I would have envisioned my playing career to go, but what it allowed me to do is be around a lot of other terrific coaches, you know, being in training camp with, with I don't want to start listing them because I'll forget some terrific guys, but uh, I just happened to bump into one at the Final Four, the Doug Collins. I got to spend some time around him. I mean, uh, training camp, here I am starting down that list. <laughs> uh, you know, with, I went to training camp with Don Nelson one year with Golden State, and you watch the, watch the way people are playing basketball right now. That's the way Don Nelson was trying to play in 1992. Smaller, big guys, fast, shoot it, run and gun and fly around and not worry about uh, mismatches. Just switch everything and pass the ball. Don Nelson is probably in Hawaii with a great big smile on his face watching the way the entire world is playing the game right now. So I just tried to, to take bits and pieces for, from every coach that uh, I had the good fortune to be around. Uh, you know, coaches have an identity and uh, tr just, just tried to steal it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to create create the game. I'm just going to try to take what I've learned and, and steal the bits and pieces and formulate formulate my own uh, way of going about it. But my dad dad and, and Coach Kruger meant a lot to me overall. Uh, David Flores, uh, Ken's Five, the CBS TV, TV affiliate here in San Antonio. Welcome, uh, Steve, to you and your family. Welcome to San Antonio. I'm going to ask you about the beautiful city, as you very well know, beautiful campus, great university, dynamic you know, leadership and all. But I'm going to ask you about the, uh, uh, the elephant in the room that nobody likes to talk about. Because I know you've been around for a while and you've seen a lot of different places and all. How much of a challenge is it going to be to you, you think, to, to recruit uh, players to this great university given the facility that you play in, the, the, home, the home arena that's, that's lacking, you know, it's inadequate. I think any basketball fan, any fan in town would, would, would say that. I don't anticipate that being an issue at all. I anticipate us finding the right guys. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about people. We're going to have good people in our program. Uh, that's the thing that really got my attention when I was here is the leadership on campus, the people in the, in the department, uh, and, and that's what we sell is the people, our commitment to the players, our skill development. We're going to surround our guys with, with attention and help them get better. And uh, when there's a bunch of students, you guys paying attention, where there's a bunch of students over there making a bunch of noise, uh, it's going to be a terrific environment, and, and that's not a concern to me at all. Hey, Coach, Jeff Platt, Time Warner Cable News. What do you take away from this year's Final Four run that you can apply as a head coach here? 
there are so many things. We, we, I, th I think it's kind of, there's been a lot written about the, the group that we recruited. That, that, that many of them were seniors on this team at this, this year at Oklahoma. We recruited some terrific people, some good players, but we didn't have a group of five-star guys. You know, and at that level, at the high major level, you need, you need some five-star five guys and some McDonald's All-Americans. At least that's what people think. Well, we didn't have that. We recruited guys that we thought fit, guys that we wanted to be around, guys that were going to work and get better, and they did it. And, <clears throat> again, all we did was, was help facilitate a little bit, help create that environment. And the players just jumped in and, and made it theirs. And the message, one of the messages I sent with the players the other night is uh, our OU team went to the Final Four, but they did that because of their investment. You know, we just helped. We, we they wanted to be in the gym. They wanted to be at practice. They wanted to be around us. And they spent hours and hours and uh, beyond description how much time they put in. And uh, that's how you take a group that, that maybe have, was a little, was ranked a little lower than some of our opponents and, and just had terrific success. They cared about each other. They loved each other. They played for each other. And they worked and worked and worked. And that's uh, uh, the perfect model, I think. Hi, uh, Brady Phelps with the Paisano student paper. Um, y'all talked about sharing a vision for the program, and obviously y'all share a common history, too, with the, the connection to Kansas State. What is it about that program? Uh, what did y'all take away from there that have it, that's influenced y'all's careers since, and how are y'all going to apply those things to this program here? Well, yes. I I think I was in the Hall of Fame before he was at K-State. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not for sure. Set the bar high. <laughs> okay. No, I, th I think the great thing about Kansas State um, is that it was, and, and I think you have to be very careful using this word because it can be overused, is it was very much a family. Um, from the community to the campus and to the engagement with everyone that it was really a good place to live and to play and to coach. But it was taking care of people and um, in the right way to help them maximize their potential and dreams were built there. Uh, we were in this rather, rather small community in Kansas that wasn't as big and fancy as some of the schools at that time when I was coaching there in the Big Eight, but, um, but they believed in us and we were able to attract really good students, student athletes there because of that family feel that maybe would have gone somewhere else, but we were able to build a program that way. So I, I think bringing that concept here fits really well with just the culture in San Antonio um, and, and, and what the students here want. Um, so I, I think there are some parallels. I, I, the biggest thing I've seen from Steve and is his work ethic. Um, um, at the Final Four last Thursday evening, we opened the Final Fours with what they call the salute event where Jim Nance gets on stage and he introduces all the teams and there's a big reception afterwards for all the NCAA people and the committees and all that kind of stuff. And um, there was one coach that was missing that night uh, from, that, from the festivities and that was Steve Henson. And so I called him and I said, you're not gonna be at the big event because I was gonna try to touch base with him and <laughs> we were still negotiating contract at that time. Um, and he said, no, I." I have the next game. I'm doing my film work. And then I found out later he was interviewing <coughs> potential assistant coaches. So I think when you put together uh, someone that has his background as a coach's kid and coming from a collegiate atmosphere that was very much family, and he has been in a situation where he's, he has helped resurrect two programs, UNLV and Oklahoma. And you're saying, oh my gosh, that's so different from UTSA. They were programs that had to be resurrected. And he has had that experience, and he's been mentored by, the, in my mind, the best coach in, in America. That, that K-State, st who was another K-Stater, um, uh, I, I think that that will play very well here on this campus. You thought I was watching film and interviewing coaches? That's great. I was sitting there huh. negotiating with my agent the whole time. <laughs> wow. Figures. Okay. <laughs> no, the, you know, I... Don't have a whole lot to add to that. You know, the, the, the K-State people are passionate about it. Um, it was easy to connect with, with people there. And, and it just, I think one of the things that I took away from that was, was how uh, exciting 
things can be for the student body. When, when people all come together, when the students come together right now, I, I know there's some buzz with the football and the Conference USA, the other sports. I want our guys to connect and go watch the other sporting events. I'll be there, of course. Our family will be there when we can. Uh, I, I, this, this campus is becoming uh, more of a, of a true, well, whatever the opposite of a commuter campus is. Residential campus. There we go, a residential campus. And, and you see those things. And, and, and uh, we had a chance to talk some people that were here before and talked about when you walked around campus and saw a lot of other schools shirts and t-shirts and uh, now you walk around see a lot of a lot of road runners a lot of UTSA shirts and I think people have that, that uh, school spirit and the, and the pride that, that comes along with uh, the things that are happening right now so I think it's just an exciting time to be here. Hey coach welcome to San Antonio. Antonio with Inside Runner Sports at scout.com. Uh, Two-part question for you coach. Uh, I know you want to hit the ground running, so just give us a, your anticipation of how quick you'll be fitting out your staff and the qualities you're looking for in, in those, the rest of your staff. And then the second part question, Coach, some people may agree, may disagree, but over the last couple of years, there's been a disconnect with the local high school programs and AAU circuit here in San Antonio. Talk about what your plan is, what you've talked with Lynn as far as resurrecting that connection within the local community, Coach. Thank you. Uh, yeah, first part with the staff. Like I said, Scott Thompson is already already here. He's ready to go. He's ready to roll. He's excited. Um, I told him we were going to try to try to get out the door about six o'clock this morning, and 5:30 he texted me wanting to know where I was at. He was ready to go. So uh, Scott's on board. Uh, we're, we're real close with with another staff member. Uh, got a guy that, that that's, that's going to come. We're just not ready to announce it yet. And uh, absolutely thrilled. Uh, home run hire, in my opinion. Uh, he's a star. He'll come in here and do some great things for us. And and uh, we want to make sure we get the, get the other recruiting assistant, get the, get the right guy. We need guys that are going to get out and work and hustle and, and recruit the state, recruit the local kids. Uh, there's huge talent right down the road in Houston, obviously. Uh, Dallas, Houston and Dallas are areas that, that people need to hammer away on, and we do too. Uh, the second part with the local guy, we're, we're going to work very hard um, with the local guys. I've already reached out to a few of them. I uh, wished I could have had time to hit even more of them to this point. We'll, we'll have clinics. Uh, get guys on campus. If we have Saturday morning workouts, we'll find great, great opportunities to get coaches here. Maybe have a little chalk talk before practice, after practice. Uh, we'll just invite the, the local guys up. One of the things we did at, at uh, in Norman is just invited Norman High coaches, Norman North coaches, Moore, Westmore, all the surrounding communities. Just kind of an informal chalk talk. We grabbed a cooler and filled it up with sodas and Gatorade. Uh, sat around a table. We had a dry erase board, and we just talked X's and O's and. Uh, Quentin was part of that. Uh, my son, he came by, and some of his his, uh, him, his buddies who are young coaches, and uh, it's just just things like that, just connecting, simple simple gestures. Uh, but we got to work at it as well. You know, there's no question. We've got to work, and we got to be the one to, to reach out. They don't need to reach out to us. We need to reach out to them. We'll do that. Coach Walter Pasquini with CBS Sports Radio. Uh, congratulations on the uh, on the hire today. Uh, tell me about the relationship that you have with R.C. Buford and, and how much of the Spurs influence do you have in, in, in as far as your, your coaching philosophy is concerned? Yeah, we've known R.C. Buford for years. That goes way, way back. Uh, R.C. had a pretty good run there where he, before he hit the Spurs, he, was, he, he moved, made a couple stops, and uh, he was on Coach Kruger's staff at the University of Florida. They went to the Final Four that year. He moved, I think he was at Kansas for a year. They may have won the national championship. He, he, he tends to uh, find success. But RC and the entire Spurs, Spurs organization is kind of the model for most NBA teams. And I think that stems from, again, the way they uh, treat people. They're kind of the model for treating NBA players the right way. I think they seek out uh, the right fit. You know, they don't, take, they don't take chances on many guys. They don't feel like they have to, to take guys with a lot of baggage. They take guys who are going to fit their, their program. Uh, I know, know several of their, their staff members over there. They've been great to us over the years. I look forward to connecting with them as soon as possible. Hopefully get over there and see a practice and, and visit with those guys as soon as possible. It's a class organization and uh, love the way they do things. Coach, what do you think is the uh, biggest challenge um, in the short term trying to get the team competitive again? The guys, it's, it's, it's always a strange period when there's a coaching change. You know, they, they've gone a few weeks here now with, without a, a head coach. Um, and it's, it, we just got to connect with them. I want to spend as much time with those guys as we can. That's why I wanted to meet them as soon as possible. That, that 
first day, first real day that I was here, we, we, we were able to get them together. Coach Lester uh, rallied them together, and we visited with them. We had a workout yesterday morning, and that wasn't as much about basketball as it was just a chance to get around them, be together for an hour on the court in their element. Um, just, just want to show them how committed we're going to be to them, let them feel good, uh, let them see how we're going to do things. It's, it's, a, it's a tough time for them. I think they're excited now to, to have somebody in place, and I think they're going to be excited about the way we're going to do things. Coach, what I want to ask you, just speaking about recruiting, is just uh, the plus of UTSA obviously being in San Antonio. And I always, you know, a lot of fans here that love college basketball think, you know, this city here is kind of a, could be a gold mine. If, uh, you know, if you, you get the mid-tier, there's a lot of great basketball players. You very well know in this big country. Uh, tell me about how, what kind of trump card that'll be for you to be able to say, hey, you know, uh, we're, we we haven't done real well lately, but we're building. We're we're going somewhere, and we we're in a great city. The Spurs play there. You've heard of the Spurs. Yeah. Can you just tell me uh, tell me about uh, what that's going to be like recruiting uh, to this great city? Absolutely, I think I think the there, there's a lot of factors that are going to be appealing appealing to kids, and that's what we're going to talk to them about. The, the, the Spurs again are the model organization. They're they're going to make a r great run this year. Uh, no question about that. They've got everything in place to to make a deep run in the playoffs. Um, there's a lot of exciting things here, and, and the opportunity to come in and, and be a part of the rebuild. You know, that, that appeals. To some, some kids want to go somewhere where it's already, everything's in place, and they just slide in and fit in. But some kids want to be a big part of, of making the change. They want to join us and, and lock arms with us and, and, and make, a, make a big statement and make, make a big rebuild. Coach, so, of course, uh, there's no time to, to even crawl or jog. You hit the ground sprinting, like you said. Someone asked you a a quick one here. What's your mindset going to be on, on scheduling, Coach? Is it something that's completely wide open? We're going to play whoever, whenever. Um, are you interested in, in possibly seeing if teams maybe want to come down to, to the Convocation Center, two for ones? Can you just talk about your mindset if you even had a chance to think about scheduling yet? Yeah, I, I, Coach Kruger did a lot to uh, help me over the years. We need to get Oklahoma down here. I need to. Need, can, can, can we can we get him on the phone? He actually huh? said he might do that. Yeah. So. No, we're we're, we're going to be you know. We got to be real smart with that. We we want to play exciting opponents. We want to play exciting games. It's important to the kids, you know, that, that we that we play the right schedule. It's important to the fans. Um, we need to we need to get some momentum. Uh, we need to, we need to work really hard. It, it, it's uh, something we can't. Uh, uh, we we got, just got to be really really smart and 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 do a terrific job with that. We got, we need to nail it. I think that's that's vital to our program is that we nail the scheduling portion. Thank you all. Thank you very much. You know, Dr. Romo came through, so um, we've got his first real Roadrunner ties here. That's, that's so my color there. On that's behalf of color. Dr. Romo, Thank congratulations. You. <laughs>